This is a 2020 Harley-Davidson Fatboy 114. The 114 stands for 114 cubic inches. That's almost two litres of engine. Let's take it for a ride. Start it up, stand off, kick it into first, flip it around, let's get out of here. 2020 Fat Boy 114, 114, which way the Americans call it. Either way, it's a big engine. It's a bloody big engine. Two cylinder, I think it's 1865 cc's. So you round that up to 1.9 litre. There's plenty of big full size sedans that have uh, smaller engines than that. 1.9 is pretty huge. But it's a uh, it's a torque monster. It doesn't it doesn't rev. Two torques at uh, three thousand RPM, I believe, 160 newton meters or so, which is uh, pretty decent, pretty decent considering a uh, liter super bike like my BMW S1000 RR. Peak torque, I think, from memory, is about nine thousand RPM, maybe eight thousand RPM. And it's about 112, 113 newton meters. So yeah, this thing has a ton of torque. That's what it's all about. It's a cruiser, easy cruising. You want to be able to zip into gaps and change lanes and quickly. You just you, you don't rip it out. No need to rip it out. About two and a half thousand RPM, 60 k's an hour, third gear, cruising along, loving life. It's easy to ride, it's, it's easy, it feels, you know, solid, it's a big American muscle bike. I was having a chat with some friends and uh, if there was a car equivalent of this thing, I have to say, probably the closest thing would be a Dodge Challenger. Good looking thing, big tyres, big engine. Probably the RT or the Scat Pack, not the crazy supercharged one, because it's not all about performance. It's uh, looking good, cruising around, and a fair bit of straight line grunting as well. Here we go. A couple of nice little corners down here and in an awesome drive. There's, uh, there's no quick shifter on this, it's pretty analogue. You've got to use the clutch every gear change, unless you're one of those crazy experts that can wreck match. But you want to, it's good, it's easy to use, nice light cable operated clutch, good mirrors. The, uh, the buttons I like on this side, and then you've got the horn, ready? Pretty easy, not bad. Probably want something a little bit deeper. Uh, and on this side you got start, on, off, and just icons, no, no writing anywhere. And the switch is uh, hazard lights, but the weird Harleyism indicators, one on the right, one on the left. It's fine on the left, and it's not a bad idea, but no, the, the, the right one, my hand's sort of busy over here working the throttle. So you want to like almost stop what you're doing with the throttle and indicate. Well, nah, I don't. I don't love it. Much prefer the, the toggle switch on the left here. You got this free hand that's you know ready to do stuff or just relax. So yeah, fat boy, it's a legend. It's a 30 year old model now. I think there's a 30th anniversary coming out this year. Essentially the same bike, just sort of some limited edition color schemes and. Uh, maybe some other little tweaks here and there but i like it you know i've had quite a few people come up to me and say oh wow wow it's a good looking bike and it is it's a very good looking bike um i do like the solid wheels i do like the, the rake and the uh, the satin finish on it now and the integrated led headlight with the forks it's just, it's a good looking thing no doubt i'm gonna miss it when it's time to give it back you know it is a nice thing you just pick up right off not think about technology. There's no Bluetooth, there's no notifications coming up on the dash or anything like that. You put your phone away, it wouldn't mount your phone. You just ride off listening to that big Milwaukee 8. Now this generation of engines called the Milwaukee 8. Uh, it's 8 because it's an 8 valve. So 4 valves per cylinder. Now some of these older pushrod engines had 2 valves or something like the LS series, Chev V8s. Uh, and, you know, they can work alright, the LS is a phenomenal engine for its size and weight, but the power output can do is uh, pretty epic. 
แต่ว่าอะไรแก้แค่นี้มันจะอะไรครับ National Park roads a little bit funny. Ooh. So you don't really know when you're going to scrape. So you're like edging, you're edging over, and it's like, oh, is it going to scrape it? Yeah, there it is. So yeah, let's just actually have a cruise down here, see what it looks like these days. Disturb the neighbours a little bit. And it's actually not too loud. You know, everyone says, ah, oh, these are obnoxious, loud motorcycles, but um. At Idle, I was I was kind of disappointed at how quiet it was. Like you wanted something exciting instantly at Idle, but you know modern restrictions these days and Euro five or Euro four or whatever this this bike meets with its cat converters and twin big mufflers, Idle's pretty quiet, which isn't you know the end of the world. Start. You do want to be able to go through drive through Maccas and order a Big Mac without having to turn the engine off but then when you run it, when you open it up oh, she sounds good that V twin burble yeah, she sounds good it's the kind of sound you want to uh, find some tunnels and go under bridges and then open it up and see what how it really sounds and resonates which is a good thing that's one thing I don't love about my BMW it doesn't sound amazing you know, it's, a, it's an epic bike. It's one of the fastest things on the wheels. All the technology you could want. But it sounds kind of boring. You know, it revs and sounds pretty new when it gets up there, but day to day it's not amazing. It's not like a V twin Ducati or a V twin Harley. Yeah, these things are all about the experience, the feel, the sound, the senses. Pretty comfy, you know, big seat. It's got this little curve up the back to almost go up the, the back side of your back a little bit. It'll stop you from uh, falling off. Not really. Just hang on. Tank, tank feels pretty good, you know, I've got long legs, so uh, my knees are uh, halfway up the tank. I don't know if I put some grips on it. You know, this, uh, this, this National Park Road's pretty crappy. Let's get out of here. That's yeah, closed anyway. Brakes. Brakes feel pretty good actually. Like everyone used to always say, oh, Harleys have uh, terrible brakes, but I think they might even be made by Brembo. I'm not 100% sure. The, the calipers at least. They say Harley Davidson on them. Uh, are they braided lines? Yeah, they look like braided lines. But it, it's the lever. The lever does need a fair bit of effort. It's not like a one finger brake type situation. Um, but for what it is, they, they feel pretty good. I'm, I'm confident in these brakes. And the, uh, the rear brake as well, it's a nice big heavy rear brake. Big pedal there so you can mash on that. ABS, which is a good thing. I'm a fan of ABS, especially around the roads. It gets a bit wet, you want that uh, control, you don't want to lock up any tyres. And you know, you're not speeding against the 220, you're not, you're not sliding down from 300 plus like you're on a superbike. You don't need twin massive discs and eight disc pads on the front end. They work, they work well enough, definitely well enough for this thing. Yeah. Oh, that's ABS, a lot of ABS there. But you know, road's a little bit, road's a little bit moist. A little bit of leave action and dust and all sorts of things here. So yeah. So the ride on this thing, you know, slow stuff, a little bit bumpy. It's it's fine. It's more comfortable than the average, and the seat is nice and soft. But what I did notice when I got on the freeway, how everything smoothed out, especially in the back end. It really did cruise along at 100 k's an hour, like like a soft tail. It was really soft, nice and comfy. The wind, yeah, you feel the wind. You know, there is this design of the uh, the forks and the headlight integrated, so it sort of tries to send a little bit of the, uh, the airflow over you. I'm not sure how effective it is, but it kind of works. You know, I'm, I'm six foot two, 188 or so, 187 centimeters. Um, so maybe I'm taller than the average bear. Um, you know, you can always option up a windscreen or get one of the touring ones if that's your thing. I don't like windscreens on Harleys much myself unless you are unless you are getting the uh, Goldwing style tour uh, into city thing, interstate, lease, beast 
45k an hour corners at 80, 90, double it, it's fine. You're not gonna get too far away from you. your mates. If you are, you know, wanting to push a whole lot further, you really should be uh, on the track. On the racetrack. Because, yeah, it's pretty easy to go very fast on a motorcycle. No doubt. So, yeah, what else we got here? 700 Ks, I think I picked it up with about 150. Uh, so what am I done? Over 500? Yeah, not too bad. Got a good feeling of it. Now, the million dollar question. How much is it and will I buy one? So, Harley's are uh, almost like a luxury brand. You know, it's, it's aspirational. It's something that's like, yeah, I don't want a motorbike, but I'd get a Harley. It's one of those things that, you know, people, when they make it, they say, okay, time to get the Harley. It's probably uh, very common to get lotto winners as well, to buy Harleys as well, you know. They dream about it for a while and, you know, win big in the lotto and say, all right, I'm going to get that Harley now. And, and that's good. It's good for them, you know. This thing is 35 grand in Australia. It's a fair whack of coin for something so basic. But... It's not about technology, it's about unplugging from technology, it's about the escape. You know, if I was commuting, if I was commuting to an office every day and I had a decent road, I'd probably want to take this over the BMW. Um, you know, you can filter, you do need probably the, the three lane slightly wider roads, you're not going to go through downtown Newtown filtering away on, uh, on this big thing. But it's low speed movement's pretty good, the, uh, the, the turning angle the handlebars, the stereo is actually a fair bit more than, than most of my sports bikes that I've been on. So you can sort of move around in slow speeds nice and easily. But you know the bars stick out pretty far, the mirrors are out quite a bit, but they're not they're not any any further past the bars, which is a good thing. My BMW I uh I fold the mirrors in when I'm filtering. Which I'm not actually sure if it's legal. I've heard miss miss and that. Well that's probably debatable. And, you know, the big gap's easy. You go through, you see a big gap, you line up at the front, and you're off. So that's the thing. A lot of people think, ah, oh, it's Harley, it's not that fast. I tell you what, 0 to 50, 0 to 60, unless you're doing a 7,000 RPM launch on your leader superbike, you're not gonna, you're not gonna keep up with these things. Seriously, that torque comes in, two grand, you've probably got more than BMW has at peak. And, uh, First gear, geared shorts. First gear ends at 60 or so. I think. I haven't even tried. It's probably five grand there. But as I said, there's no point in revving out. You do feel the uh, the power die off in the, the upper rev range. But there, yeah, that zero to 60 sprint, you're off. You're away. It's going to be quick. As I said, unless the superbike is on it doing a 7,000 plus RPM launch, this thing's going to take it without even trying. It has its appeal, no doubt. Look, you don't even have to change down a second. Too bad. You're away. So there you go, Harley Davidson, the icon, fat boy, the bike Arnie is the uh, model 101 Terminator, picks up John Connor on from the, uh, the drains of uh, LA. It's a good thing, see you fat boy, see you around.